just as I was about to <laughs> drop the message. Admit, admit to what? Crimes? Oh, hello. We are connecting. I can see you, but I cannot see A million see. thing. There we go. Hello, hello. Hello. How's it going, man? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, good. I'm liking the T-shirt on the TV behind you. That's the first thing Thank I can you. see. <laughs> I totally didn't like spend five minutes taping it up there because uh, I realised <laughs> couldn't, you couldn't see the bottom of it. So, <laughs> but quite right too. Is that like, is that an inside joke that I'm not aware of? Oh, you're not aware of Doctor Who's greatest villain, Skongo. Oh, you you want to get up? Yeah. Well, he he um. Oh, it's actually an inside joke with um a, a meme Doctor Who group. Uh, uh, it's essentially just a photo of like one guy with his nose squished down. Right. Um, and then it was a way to battle people who are really elitist, like saying, oh, you haven't watched the classic series, you're not a true fan. So this is, yeah, this is the biggest classic series villain of all. And if you haven't heard of Skongo, you're not a true fan. Um, well, well, damn. Well, I'm yeah. glad I'm a true yeah. fan now. Otherwise, yes. otherwise I'd be out. <laughs> Absolutely. It's like... It's weird, like, people have done full-on audio dramas of it. Like, there's, like, a really? three-episode series of this character. He has, like, these magical time bongos, which he uses to control time. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. <laughs> well, Davros, Daleks, move aside. I think we have oh. found the best. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have um, your magical time bongos. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm loving the stuff that you got in the background, by the way. Like, you just got memorabilia like you've got everything doctor who there oh yeah. i have um I'm crazy yeah I'm a crazy uh, in australia we get place. maybe like that's brilliant <laughs> oh, this is oh, that's life. awesome oh it's a puppet that's even better yeah. <laughs> is a hell of a drug uh we don't get that well we get like maybe 20 character options like items here and that's it yeah. so this is maybe one of five that you can find at a store like right. anywhere in australia so it, it's awful <laughs> oh, come on come on yeah. bbc give some love to australia goodness sake yeah absolutely Leave absolutely um i've got obs and like audacity here if you want i can record my side if you It'd like we good to have a backup as uh, awesome I, I mean the interview coming out today as we record this the mm -hmm. show is coming out the interview today with katie haynes was hilarious with how like messy it was like okay. um, because I didn't know if it was recording or not. I no joke got my uh, my proper like in person camera and had it oh. here <laughs> recording the screen, and that was going to be the backup. Okay. Uh, and I did that halfway through. Her poor face. <laughs> she was not aware of what was going on. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I, I did streaming and I did like Minecraft Doctor Who stuff where I was like, yeah, I'll show my face and stuff. And so for eight, that took for ages to get that right because yeah. there's just so much out there. I think that's a um, rite of passage doing Minecraft Doctor Who, isn't it? You, oh yeah. At that stage where you're like not quite confident to do live action stuff, so you're like, I play Minecraft, so does everybody else. Let's do that! Yay! I was I was involved in a lot of the mods, so yeah, that was oh, kind really? of my introduction. I'll talk about it more in the actual like when we do the proper stuff um but okay. yeah that's quite interesting yeah um i'll do a, i'll do a sync test now um i'm i've got audacity up and i've just hit recording on my side so i'll just three two one hopefully that'll be enough for you to to go yeah. through there <laughs> yeah so you should have like a nice 1080p of me here and then oh, that's all audacity I I love yeah, I'll it. get Audacity to clear out all the background noise because I'm very picky about how I sound. Fair <laughs> uh, enough. Yeah. So am I. Yeah. That's why I do all the different voices instead of my own. Yeah. I loved you, Peter Capaldi. Oh, uh, you. Especially <laughs> the, the episode zero, just him jumping out of nowhere to say trans rights. <laughs> loved it. <laughs> I don't know. Where, when I write the scripts, I'm either very, very picky or I do whatever mm -hmm. springs to mind first. And that was what sprang to mind first. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, you reeled a lot of people in, I bet you. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Well, I think someone actually yeah. did repost just that clip. That's the only clip that's ever been re-uploaded to the show so far. It's just completely okay. jumping out going trans rights. <laughs> Doing something right. Or something yeah. wrong. I don't know. That's the two choices. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure this light is just blinding me here. If I don't have it, this it's just very dumb. 
Oh, yeah. It goes from like normal to professional. It looks really oh, yeah. nice. I'm very professional with this like two pound <laughs> desk light. <laughs> I've just got the light I've... in the face. Well, the light that I've got here, um, I've got it on a lamp. Oh, sorry. TikTok's playing. But I've got it set so I can just change its color and stuff. Oh, so oh, that's, oh, nice. that's not as dramatic. Now that's but here we professional. Go. <laughs> there we go. So I can, I can have a gamer room. Yeah. Just have that going. <laughs> but I, 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 oh, absolutely. Oh, I got to fix that. How do, was that right? That looks about right. There we go. That's what it was. Nice, nice, yeah, that, nice. yeah. Yeah. Didn't spend like an hour tweet twiddling with that for this or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, at least yeah. I, you know, I see you. I spent an hour sleeping. I woke up at oh, 10 perfect. o'clock and I, know, I saw your message. I was like, oh, I better hurry up. I thought I had more time. <laughs> well, it's 8 p.m. here, so I, I've had all day. I'd be a bit oh, worried perfect. if it was an hour for me. See, yeah. For me. See, that's, that's what yeah. I find quite fun because I, I realised uh, how quite globetrotting the show has become already. So I interviewed mm. Katie, who's in America, Spectral Horizons, which was in the UK in America, and Bo, the artist uh, who's in the Netherlands. So oh, I'm okay. all over the place now, especially with now with yeah. uh, Australia. This is fun. Show's going continental. It's great. It is. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a continental show. Is that, is that a yeah. word? Or is that a breakfast? I Pretty, sure. Pretty sure. It was in Ice Age, so I'm sure it's a word. The Ice yeah. Age is the, is the way to go. <laughs> absolutely. I, am, I identify it as a Sid the Sloth. Oh, absolutely. It's a mood. <laughs> oh, hell yeah, dude. Right, yeah. let's get in right into the questions. Awesome. I should start doing an intro. I'll do an intro. I rarely do an intro. Sure. Hello, welcome to the interview bit, which audience retention always tells me is the bit that is least watched. So here I am doing it again. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah honesty is the best policy. I must be doing something. Absolutely. Else. Right. Um, Absolutely. So I'm here with Clayton who is Hello. the main developer behind the Doctor Who fan game, Forgotten. Well, I've, I've literally just written forgotten. <laughs> You've forgotten. I've forgotten. Forgotten. I've forgotten, forgotten. <laughs> forgotten time. <laughs> forgotten time. How did I forget yeah. that? I, I have it written down and I looked at it and I went, I've only written Forgotten. I didn't finish my train of forgotten. thought. <laughs> Hi, Clayton. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. I just realised my microphone's all the way over here. I should bring it. Is that better? <laughs> oh, I think it was fine before. Like, oh. it's all sounding good. That's yeah. a piece of microphone then. Right. Yeah. So, question one. Where did the, ident- uh, the idea for Forgotten Time come from? <laughs> um, well, it, it pretty much just years of me developing and doing stuff because I, I I started off in Minecraft as a lot of people have um, and I did like a lot of Tata stuff um, oh, yeah. and then and then it eventually went to sort of helping out the modding community of it uh, where like there was a there's a mod called the new Tata's mod um, and that just adds just a bunch of Tata stuff and I always wanted to add like a bit of story to it and then I yeah. realized well if I want to do something serious, I want to switch to like an actual game engine and try and develop something. Um, so that's where Forgotten Time uh, sort of came from. Oh, yeah, it was brilliant. just sort of, yeah. How long so far have you been working on the uh, on the game? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, if you want to be technical, I guess the first version was like 2018, where All I was right. just making a sort of like a Tata simulator. Yeah. Um, and then that went on for about... A month until I got bored, um, and then I picked it up again. <laughs> yeah, I picked it up again, probably about uh, end of last year. I, th- I want to say it was about end of last year, and um, I was in a group call with just a bunch of these like modelers, and I just thought, well, it would be cool to give it a go. Um, and so that's where it's come back now. Um, so probably about uh, this is seven months, I think. Oh wow! Um, on and off, on and off. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, you've got with any project, I suppose you can't work on it all the time. It would drive any man insane. Yeah. Yeah. Although it would be nice just to have like five days a week dedicated to doing something, but um, no, life gets in the way of that. But um, it sure yeah. does. Whether it be school, yeah. college, work, it's all yes. But uh, yeah. so, what is uh, what's the rough plot of the game? I saw your post about a Butterfly One prequel episode. Yes. So um, the idea for this is that you're playing as the Doctor. Um, uh, essentially, you are a part of this sort of like 
time fractured event. Uh, I can't use the word time fracture because obviously <laughs> that's that's already a thing. Um, but essentially, there's this crack in time caused by this um, outside of the timeline uh, casino that specializes in timeline gambling. Um, and you being the doctor, of course, you get yourself stuck involved in it. Um, and being there causes a crack within the entire timeline of the universe. So it's very your job to go very and fix fat. these cracks. Yes, I love a good Moffat story. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> but yeah, um, there's a lot of stuff that um, I want to do with it. But at the moment, it's looking at two episodes, uh, this sort of prequel episode, which is episode one. Um, yeah. And then episode two being a Dalek story, um, which is but I've been mainly working on at the moment, which has been a lot of fun. Well, yeah, I've seen all these yeah. Dalek posts, especially those videos <laughs> of the tests. I'll, I'll get to yes. it. But I've, I awesome. love it. Um, <laughs> so it. Will it be a voice acted game or will it be more of a silent protagonist type dealio? <sighs> That's a good question. I've been, I've been battling it. Uh, what I wanted to do with it was that because a lot of people are like, well, if you're making a Doctor Who game, they want to be whatever Doctor they want, whether yeah. it's the second Doctor or you're playing, you know, 13. Um, so a big thing that I wanted to do was to try and create um, a silent protagonist of the Doctor um, so you could pretty much put any Doctor into it. Um, so whether that's, you know, you want to play as 12, it can be there for you. If you want to play as Dominic's Purple Doctor, there's even the potential for that as well. That would be uh, I, yeah, I, I talked to a few people about it when I was first concepting the idea and they were just rushing with ideas of how it would fit in the Doctor's timeline for whatever oh. they wanted to do. <laughs> so I'm like, brilliant. That's exactly what I'm trying to go for. Um, but if there is dialogue, then it will be more text-based, like a three-option choice right. type deal. Yeah. Yeah, that, that sounds exciting. Well, if you ever need a uh, Doctor voice actor, I mean, I'm oh, absolutely going to be available. You know. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, on the more technical side, what mm. software do you use to make the game? Uh, well, originally we were using the Unity game engine because um, that's what I was most familiar with and that was at the start of this year. And then I was pretty much enticed into Unreal Engine um, <laughs> just by a few screenshots that someone posted and I rather foolishly went, you know what, I'm just going to pick everything up and throw it into that. Um, but at the moment it's being developed in Unreal 5, which is a like a pre-production staging of the new engine of Unreal. Wow. So we get a bunch of awesome stuff. Um, there's Lumen, which is their new lighting system. So Ray, it's sort of like Ray tracing, except not. Uh, I still need to look into it a bit more. Um, but it just makes anything that I put into the game uh, with no minimal, like no effort at all, look beautiful. So I'm very happy with that so far. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Un Unreal is, well, as the name would suggest, very, very in, in advanced. Unreal. And that yeah. explains how amazingly uh, amazingly detailed, like the Dalek and the TARDIS has, has come out, with, especially with the lighting is incredible. Yes. Yeah, the lighting, it's, it was literally turning on a button from between engine <laughs> versions, which is amazing. But I wouldn't be here without like the amazing people who made those models, um, like uh, the glowing one, Harry, Tom, uh, with Tom the Witch, um, Dalius as well, some awesome people who have just you know, put their sort of time into it. And um, yeah, I wouldn't be here without them. Um, we'll, definitely, uh, yeah. we'll definitely give you a chance to shout out the amazing uh, little team you've got. Um, Absolutely. The next thing's not really a question, but again, getting mm -hmm. back to the Dalek stuff, the, the two I, I think I saw were the death screen uh, one where the Dalek's chasing and shooting at you and the yes. other one where it's like a sort of a square you're running around where the Dalek sort of spotted you. And mm. both of them, I can just imagine like either whether it be playing it or in VR or what have you, it would be terrifying. Just watching the video, like how dark it is and the, the lights of the Dalek Eye Stalk following you and you can only see the light. It looks genuinely oh, yeah. incredible. Well, thank you. Yeah, it. I've been, I think I've spent about three months at the moment on those Daleks and it's still rather, still a little janky. But um, I, the biggest thing is I want to make them feel alive and like have those moments where you may be just hiding under a desk and it rolls in. <laughs> <laughs> stops looks around and goes yeah there's nothing here and continue it's like alien isolation of, if anything a little bit I, I, i've had a bit of inspiration from that um so i'm hoping that i can bring at least something like that to the table with it uh, just give me yeah. one second it started raining no problem rain is pouring through my window <laughs> <laughs>
It was just raining here, actually. So it, there is a chance it could be continental same rain. Um, it could be. Yeah. Yes. What a, what a time. <laughs> yes. All right, yes. All right, all right. So next question. Oh, perfect. Uh, along the lines. Um, who are some of the people that you've been able to work with on this project? Um, well, uh, like I said before, um, uh, just some amazing sort of uh, lesser known people. Um, mm. The glowing one, Harry, he, uh, everything he, this guy does is amazing. Um, I approached him um, pretty much at the same time as everyone else, really. And uh, there was a point in time where maybe there would be Dalek mutants being able to be seen. Oh. And he said, oh, let me see what I can throw together. And it's the most gross thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, I'll send you a screenshot uh, to put on, but it's, it's terrifying just the amount of details he's put into it. Um, and he and another guy, Tom, which I mentioned earlier, uh, they collaborated um, with some rather uh, dodgy sketches that I did uh, to bring our custom TARDIS and screwdriver to life. And it's like magic what these people do, um, yeah. just being able to take a concept and model it and then it look so perfect. Um, yeah, I would not be here without them. And then Dale, uh, Dalius, he has been working on the interior on and off, um, which again, awful screenshots. I may just send you all <laughs> these like little screenshots Please of do. ideas I'd I had. i flash them up in, in, during the interview. Awesome. But yeah, just showing them off and g giving them pretty much nothing. And they've just brought these amazing things to life. And I'm so glad that I get to uh, take their stuff and, and show it off in the best way that I can. Um, yeah. Absolutely. It's um, and definitely go and follow these people as well as Clayton for mm. the uh, ongoing development of the game. I've just been fascinated by everything that's been coming out with it. And leading on with that is sort of my final question to you. What sure. about the game that you have made so far would you say you're most proud of or most excited to share with uh, the audience? I'm going to say those Daleks. I'm, I'm, I've rewrote them about five times so far. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it just, it, I've always wanted to make them feel alive. And it was rather a challenge at first because I thought, well, you could just put a Dalek in the game and it would just kind of move around, you know, make it look left and right. It'd be fine. But then realizing how like style, like how like set, Dalek movements is in the TV show. Like for a Dalek to shoot you, they've really got to be set up at a certain point to like look nice and shoot. But if you're giving a player like to be shot at any sort of angle, it's trying to get their behavior to not, you know, not only react to the player, but then feel like it's a Dalek and sounds believe it looks believable. Yeah. Um, so that's been what I've been most proud of um, and what's elevated even more. And I can't believe I didn't mention his name, but Joe Vivas, um, who has done the, who voices the Daleks in the uh, bugger series, uh, that list of like um, pretty much comedic Dalek voiceover stuff. Yeah. Um, I, I approached him and said, Hey, would you mind doing some voices? And he just knocked it out of the park. <laughs> um, even with just like, I sent him maybe, 10 or so lines and I got about 95 or something <laughs> back. So I'm, um, Oh, and that's not even dialogue or anything. That's just reaction-based stuff. It's, yeah, the, the Daleks at the moment are like the best thing about it all. And I'm, I'm so happy with how they're going. Oh, terrific. Well, thank you yeah. again for this uh, for this chance to interview, Clayton. It was very kind no of problem. you from across uh, multiple oceans and countries we were able <laughs> to speak. Yes, the power of Zoom. <laughs> power of Zoom. Would have been Discord, but Discord doesn't yeah. like me these days. Uh, who does? <laughs> I saw it was rude. <laughs> wow. oh, I, I meant to say who well, likes Discord. Screw this. I meant, to, I meant to say who liked Discord. <laughs> no, screw it. Cancel him. Hashtag yep. cancel Clayton. Oh. He's Commander mean. Moose is over party. Yep. Can't <laughs> wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, thank uh. you.